Hello, hello, Heal Squad. What up? It's going to be a great day. You know why? Because when you know better, you get better. And that's what we do here every single day. Today is no exception. And we do it together because we're better together. So on this uh, Eve, Eve, Eve of Christmas, remember Jeff Graham? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. Christmas Eve, Eve, baby. We're doing our whole RGF this week, Maria, is about Christmas Eve, Eve. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so it's like Christmas Eve, 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 Eve but yeah. it is the holiday week, and uh, I just got back from the most amazing trip of my life that I can't wait to share with you guys, and um, and share some new travel tips that I have because a lot of you are going to be traveling uh, coming up, which uh, I am as well going to be traveling now. So news, news to my ears. News to your ears. It just happened this morning. Oh so gosh. anyhow, friends, um, very excited to be with you guys today. By the way, if you have any last minute shopping like me, you can go to Macy's.com backslash heel squad. We have lots of picks there for everyone and anyone on your list. Uh, you can go there. We've curated the page. I mean, I've curated the page myself with all the things that I love. So if you need some last minute ideas and last minute things, there's some really cute stuff there. Um, and, uh, we're always updating it. So take a look. Um, also a little shout out for our new merch heel squad by Maria Menounos. How Here cute is go. that? I got my first, this is my first time drinking out of the mug. How do you feel? It like feels you got a squad? Great. It feels like I got a squad. It feels like I have my accountability here in the oh, morning right. to remind me to make a good choice when I get ready to eat. So I had, what did I have this morning? I had some, by the way, meal prepping is so huge for breakfast. So we've talked about this before. So I have lots of eggs already cooked up and in the fridge and I just heat it up. Um, I know microwaving is really bad. So sometimes I use the pan and I kind of just reheat it on the pan, but it's better than, you know, the alternative. So I had some eggs scrambled with some feta and tomato a little salad first, because as, as Elisa VT taught us, I have been eating my vegetables first, my protein and fats, and then my carbs, layering this in my system so that my endocrine system is happy. And I'll tell you, my latest blood work says that my hormones have all normalized. And wow. it was after I started doing that. So yes, you I'm inspired me. I started. Oh, good. I was going to say, just to, you know, it's, I thought it would be a lot harder than it was. I was like, that sounds awful and disgusting. I've just been doing like a little mm -hmm. arugula before my um, eggs. And usually I do like an egg on my little grain-free avocado toast, but instead I do, I'll eat the egg first and then I have the toast and it literally is the same thing. <laughs> like, Yay! Yeah. And, and you know what's funny, Maria? And I wonder if you feel this way. I actually feel like more satiated when I do that. I... I feel yeah, like sometimes that's the fiber goes in first fiber fills you up. That makes sense because I'm like, okay, yeah, I actually feel like full and for longer too. So I've been doing it and it's really not hard. You guys, you know, what's also so cool about this. So, you know, we'll sit down to eat and you know, once in a while, like there'll be something that's a cheat on the table, like some French fries right. or something. So because I have to eat in this layered approach and I'm very like stuck to it, by the time I eat everything, those things are cold and I don't want them anymore. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. And I'm sure Hot you're tip. like, you feel good, like you're full from the other stuff. So you like, don't exactly. even want it. I'm mm. like, oh, not a big deal, right? I so, like that. That's a little tip. But, <clears throat> and then just now I was a little hungry. I know I'm going to roll right into a workout session after this. So I have celery sticks. I keep celery in water. In, in like Tupperware in the fridge. And then I just put almond butter on there. So I had a couple of those to kind of fill me up. And now I'm having my green tea last. All of these things we've learned here on the show. And I'm telling you, they're making such a big difference in my life. And Queen, I'm so happy you're doing it too now. Um, all of these little things add yeah. up. So, you know, we don't have to look at you know, making these, you know, massive sweeping changes. It just doesn't work like that. When I lost 40 pounds, I did it in a very slow, methodical way. And I built on my wins. So you have to keep building on your wins. Mm. You know, you implement this, you start seeing a little difference, or maybe you get some results, or maybe it gets easy, then you can add something else. When you know better, you get better. That's right. You, know better, you do better. And that's what we're doing. 
The caffeine thing was a huge thing for me also. Like I always knew that you shouldn't drink coffee on an empty stomach, but even like tea, Maria, when Elisa was like, no, 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 even your tea, like not on an empty stomach. And I never thought, I don't know. I was just like, tea's fine for any time. So that was another one that really, um, that lesson from her helped a lot. So I'm like, I always make sure even if I have tea in the afternoon, uh uh-uh, it's like I have food in my stomach first. Yeah, my stomach's so much happier. Oh, I should put my blue light glasses on, even though I have my healing light here. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, my stomach's so much happier not doing caffeine, um, yeah. not no coffee, and and just doing the caffeine after a full stomach. But um, yeah, it's it's all making a difference. And um, I will say, Elisa VT was recent. We'll put a link to it in the summary of this episode, just to make it easy for you guys. It is an incredible episode with, you know, lots of important information for your health. And um, I'm really grateful to to have her and all the experts we have on this show. So invite your friends to join the Heal Squad in the new year. I, I said something recently in a post. I was like, listen, you know, we're starting to think of our New Year's resolutions. I haven't figured out mine yet. But uh, most of them are about getting better in some way. We're always trying to figure out how to level up. And I can't think of a better category to level up in in life than your health. So we're here. We're doing this every day. We'll be your accountability partners. We'll be your friends' accountability partners. We now have merch to keep us accountable and wear our sweatshirts that say CEO of my health and all kinds of cool things to to keep us on track and and be able to you know wear it loud and proud that we're we're on this healing journey. So really excited and Queen. Kudos to you and Elaine and. Priscilla and the team at Forward Female for working so hard to get all of the merch done and up and on the sites. And we did it. I learned a lot, Maria. (laughs) I learned a lot. I never knew anything about like the back end of all that stuff. And my God, there was a lot that goes into it. But now I know, which is kind of cool. Like you keep learning and growing. So I'm really excited. I'm so happy how it turned out. And I seriously have worn my trucker hat almost every single day. I'm obsessed with it. And I have to tell you too, it's a big hit with the younger gen, all my interns Mm -hmm. texted and they were like, um, we need that hat. And I said, yes, you guys do. So I'm loving the merch and there's more to come. And I don't know. It's just, it's, it's exciting. We've been talking about it for so long. So I'm so happy. And it's popping. People are buying and loving. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we want more feedback of course, because it's still new, but, um, we have two other collections that we've designed that are ready um, in March, there'll be a new collection and, or I think in March, we'll see, we'll figure it out, but we have two more collections of things that you guys are going to die for. Um, in the meantime, I wore my heel squad, uh, beanie to the Arctic. So I had to go to London to work for MTV. I was hosting the real, uh, the real world challenge, the, uh, challenge reunion, And when I knew I was going to have to go to London mid-December, I Googled, what's the most Christmassy thing I can do in Europe? Yes, I put Christmas E with a Y. And what came up was Lapland, Finland. Now, Queen, had you ever heard of Lapland, Finland before? Never in my life until you told me. I also didn't, I mean, some of the things you did, I didn't even think were like actually real until (laughs) I saw you do them. And I was like, wait, what? So Lapland, Finland is unreal. So, uh, and I would have never thought like go to Finland. I didn't know that's where you could see the Northern Lights as well. Anyway, uh, we went on this epic adventure. Um, Our luggage or my luggage never made it, unfortunately. So when we went to London to check in after, you know, the MTV gig, checked in the bags. And luckily, here's a hot travel tip. Before I left LA, I had an extra uh, air tag. Kevin bought all these air tags. And I said, you know, I'm going to put some in my pants pocket in my suitcase. You never know. So we land in the Arctic and something tells me, check the tag. And I see that my luggage is still in London. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to be in the coldest place in the world with no luggage. Luckily, the stylist, uh, Grazi, who I've worked with before for MTV in Europe, knew I was going to the Arctic. So Kelsey, she pulled some amazing winter pieces for me. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't have space. Please don't bring them. She's like, I'm bringing them, I'm bringing them. So we get there. I feel guilty. I take it. 
and I had to get a duffel bag. They bought me a duffel bag at MTV to put it all in. And I said, uh, you know, Kev, we just, we'll buy a suitcase at the airport. We'll stick the duffel in there and we'll be good. And so we, uh, we land in the Arctic, that bag makes it and Kevin's suitcase. Luckily my toiletries were in Kevin's suitcase. (gasps) Thank God. I had nothing but the clothes on my back and that (laughs) duffel. And what the duffel contained was a black puffer, a black ski suit, and uh, by Colmar, and this moose knuckle sweatshirt and sweatpant look that would go with the big parka that she gave me. So I had the parka that I had on my back. And by the way, almost didn't bring it with me, almost packed it because I said, I'm just in an airport. Why do I need a jacket? I don't want to lug this jacket around. I would have only had a light puffer with me. <gasps> in the Arctic. Oh my God. It was below, like seven below zero or something. It was so cold. I'm just like, I mean, the whole situation, the fact that you put the tag on it and that happened, like it was just nuts. the fact that you actually took the devil bag and you were like, okay, I'll take this. I mean, thank, thank God. God. No, thank God. Guys, TMI, it was... <laughs> There were so many like things that happened. We our our flight to London from LAX was delayed because a drunk passenger decided to start smoking on the plane. And Stop it. he couldn't or wouldn't identify his bags. So they they um deplaned all of the coach cabin, brought everyone back on. Then they said they think that there's a bag somewhere, and maybe they put he put it in first class or something. So then they deplane all of us again. Then we, we came back in. So we were delayed no a couple way. of hours because of that. Then we, you know, we get to London, we finish work, we go on to, you know, start our cool adventure to the Arctic. And that plane got delayed London to Helsinki. So we missed our connection. Then we, then it took, so instead of like a three or four hour trip, it ended up being like a full 12, 14 hour day. Oh my and God. we didn't get our bags. And then on top of it, TMI, I got my period and those Uh, European tampons are so small. (laughs) And now just imagine who had to keep doing the only laundry she had in the (gasps) sink every night because we were having massacres. It was awful. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had someone very close to my life that decided to go nuclear on me because their, Uh all of their things just got too hard on them and they decided to make me the punching bag. And I was like, Oh, this is awesome. So it was, it was during this time. Yeah, it was brutal. It was brutal. But, but what I will say is nothing was going to stop me from having the best time ever. So I looked at Kevin, I'm like, I'll be washing the one pair of underwear I have in the sink. I used his (laughs) boxers and his long underwear for sleep garments at night. Perfect. And, and luckily I had that winter gear that she gave me. We went to the local, like, Finland Target in the Arctic and bought some winter wellies and Kevin had heated socks by the way really really cool socks they have little battery powered heaters of course he has those where did you find those I would have died guys I thought I knew cold you don't know cold until you've been in the Arctic it was frigid so then We get to finally get to the hotel and I'm just racing to get there because we're going to miss our first event, which is, and here's Kevin. Just coming in, producer's note, have we taken a break? We haven't taken a break, Kev. Should we take a break? Let's take a break. I should take my breaks because then it's easy to drop in the end. (laughs) Oh, well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I'll tell you about how Kevin and I help save a little girl in a snowmobile accident. We'll be right back. So we are back. All right, friends. Now, suitcases didn't arrive. We're racing to get to the igloo, not the hotel, the igloo, so that we could make our snowmobile adventure. And we get there and everyone's in the van waiting. And we're like, we have to go to the room and change really fast and put on all our layers. So we race. We make it. We get on the snowmobile. I have no idea what they said when they were teaching instructions. Like, Maria. <laughs> there's like 50 people there and they're trying to tell us that I'm standing there and you know me and in instructions. It just, it doesn't saturate. I don't know. I need to like physically learn it like hands-on. Yeah. 
So uh, I get on the snowmobile. Of course, I'm the one who's going to drive, not Kevin. And so he's behind on my, you know, on my butt, basically. And it's an hour to this, like, little cabin that we're going to all meet at. And right before we get to the cabin, all of a sudden, we see an accident. The One of the snowmobiles tipped. And we hear a screech and a screaming that was, like, oh, no. so scary. Did Kevin tell you any of this yet? No, I haven't heard any of this. So, oh my God, it was horrifying. And, you know, Kevin and I, like, we think we're like superheroes. So we always race to whatever it is. We're runners to it. Whatever someone's in need, we're going to like fly. Yeah. So, but I'm attached with the cord in case like there's an accident. So it'll rip and shut the snowmobile off. (laughs) It didn't work. (gasps) I'm trying to rip it off. It wouldn't come off. No way. I rip the cord off with my glove. I start running. I bite it just as I'm arriving to the accident because we were a couple snowmobiles behind. Everyone's standing around. All these men are just watching. No one's doing anything. I struggle to get up. Kevin's already in action. And we thought it was the couple we rode with in the van who had a one-year-old baby. Oh, my God. And I, once I got to the, the, the gully that they fell in, I'm thinking this was the mother screaming because her baby's <laughs> underneath. So I instantly grab her and hoist her up or whatever I thought was her. And Kevin's screaming and I'm, I lift as he screams. And I didn't realize what he was doing, but he hoisted the whole snowmobile from its side no, he didn't. all the way up. Again, thinking a baby's trapped under there dying. And so we like hoist, he hoists, lifts, I lift, what I thought was the mother was an eight year old girl and, but like deadlift her really hard. And then Kevin curls her and grabs her. But what happened, what I didn't realize is I grabbed her just in time because she might've broken her leg when we flipped the thing. Cause she was oh attached and like stuck. It was so harrowing, so crazy. And I just watched Kevin like just <laughs> lift the girl like a freaking superhero and and he's calming her down. He's oh. like, you're okay, you're okay. My leg, I broke my leg. And, and he's like, you're good, you're good. And he's super calm. Wow. And because he was super calm, she became calm. Mm-hmm. Right? So when you have hysteria, obviously that just creates more. So he was so good at how he handled it and her. And once I knew she was okay... I just started shaking and my eyes were welling up because there's like just such a, a traumatic moment. Yeah. And, uh, and then she realized she was okay. And like, she was, you know, good to go. And we just went over to the little, um, cabin, oh you know, gosh. they, somebody, I think just kind of drove them. Oh no. Yeah. They brought something anyway. It was insane. That was our first night. We had just arrived <laughs> And then so was it just her on the snowmobile or like was someone else driving with her? It was with her mom. Oh yeah. That's and her mom scary. just lost control. And this is what's crazy about these things, right? Like we go on these trips and we sign up for all these activities and we think that there's people that are going to save us. And our tour guide was the only one who tried to help. And she's like five feet tall and, and she was right in there and she was thanking us for, for helping, but everybody else just kind of stood by. Now, maybe people are afraid to intervene because if they do and something happens and they get sued, cause I said to Kevin later, I'm like, well, you know, you could get into a situation by trying to help people. That's the hard part of it all, but we can't help ourselves and we would never just leave anybody anyway. But the nearest hospital is like hours away that could do anything with an x-ray, right? That's You're in the so middle wild. of the Arctic on a snowmobile. Like to yeah. get somebody to come help you is you were going to have to ride on a snowmobile injured. To get out. Wow. Which is bumpy and painful. You know, you think about all these things and it's very dangerous. Like my best friend, Alyssa, she went mopeding in the Bahamas and crashed and it was very, very bad. And that happens all the time. Jet ski accidents, snowmobile accidents. Oof. And so on the way home, two other girls tipped. And they're like, yeah, people, it happens all the time. Breaking legs, breaking this, breaking oh, that. Oh, absolutely like, not. Well, that's not good. 
So thank God you guys are good. My Lord. And thank God you guys were there. That's I was driving. crazy. I'm an excellent yeah. driver. <laughs> Maria is an excellent driver. <laughs> Meanwhile, That's I was nice. being really aggressive and crazy. And that does I'm not really surprise grateful, me either. <laughs> but in a controlled manner. In a controlled right. manner. Because Mario and Johnny. Slips so easily. Imagine me. But um wow. but it was pretty wild. And so the next day we suited up and we went to Santa's village. So you can actually they have a live cam there. And they have like, you know, meeting with Santa, which when we got in there, we realized it was probably COVID haven because it was a long 45 minute plus line. I think we need to meet Santa this badly. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. So I pulled the plug, but <laughs> we walked around the Santa's village. We did the reindeer sleigh ride, which was super cool. And, uh, and then we, there's like a spot you'll see on my Instagram at some point where you cross the Arctic, like where it's like, that's the line where you're officially in the Arctic. It was, it was really neat. And the igloo guys, if you don't follow me on Instagram, start because you're going to die at these pictures. You can't even believe these are real photos that I actually had to put us in them so that you could see the juxtaposition of us and the, the view, because I couldn't believe what I was seeing and what I was taking. So we, we, the snowmobile adventure was so you could go see the Northern Lights. And on the way home, we saw a peak of them. The next night is when we really saw the Northern Lights and we were in our igloo. We had had a nice dinner and all of a sudden you just start seeing changes in the sky. And it's wild because the phone really captures it. Sometimes the naked eye wasn't capturing it. So I would put the phone on like, oh my God, Kevin, right there, right there, or right there. It's starting right there. And the pictures are magical unbelievable. When you were sending me some of the pictures you were sending me, I, it's, it was hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that you were in there taking those. Like mm -hmm. it just doesn't see, it really doesn't seem real. Like it's so yeah. magical. It's I'm, I'm going to look right now at what I posted. It, the trees are covered in snow Yeah, and the view is like you're in outer space. That's what it feels like. The co yeah, the colors and, you know, isn't it rare too? Like sometimes you can't, like people will go and you can't even see the Northern Lights. So wasn't, mm -hmm. so like so lucky you guys got to see them. That's so, so cool. So lucky, but I knew we would. I yeah. knew, I knew. It's been on my bucket list forever. It's my dream. I knew there was no way we were not going to see it. Uh, and then we went to Helsinki. We overnighted in Helsinki because the igloo, by the time we booked it, only had two nights available. So we overnighted in Helsinki. We got to see Helsinki and the famous Stockman windows, which are probably like a Macy's or a Bloomingdale's here. And, um, and went through all the markets, the Christmas markets. It was really beautiful. Uh, <laughs> the last five years, they said Helsinki hasn't had a white Christmas. And this was super white. No <laughs> way. Was so much snow. Yeah. So we were really lucky in all, all ways, other than the wow. luggage. Uh, we but you lucky. still looked so cute. Your outfits. I was like, okay, the hat, the hat I got at free people and so uh, no, sorry. The hat I got at anthropology mm. when I was shopping one day, I go, Oh, I need this for my trip. This is too cute. But, uh, that was our adventure and it was unbelievable. Wait, did you see reindeer though? We did. We went on the reindeer sleigh. You didn't see my Instagram picture. No. I need to go. Wow. Look. <laughs> so rude. I saw, wow. I saw your, I saw your Instagram in the hat and the, was it a swipe? I need to go look now. Wow. It was a standalone picture <gasps> on, on the night of my movie premiere, which by the way, I was so awake in Helsinki that I was live tweeting with everybody as they were so watching good. the movie. And, uh, and people were DMing feedback. us like, so proud of you. They're like our girl. Thanks friends. Thank you guys so for your sweet. support. But, um, but yeah, hot ta hot tip for travel. You got to put air tags in your suitcases now because they said they closed the claim because they're like, we closed the claim because the suitcases were delivered. We're like, yeah, no. And we have the exact location. At first they said, uh, your luggage is lost. We don't know where it is. I'm like, I do. So for Wait. your trip right now, guys, if you're traveling for the holidays, I beg you, buy some air tags, put them in your pockets of your clothes, in your suitcase suitcases and you will thank me later and do not put anything valuable in there because it's just a crazy time. And then FYI, 
Stephanie Abrams from the Weather Channel has alerted me to the insane weather that's hitting the Northeast region. Yeah. So do not travel Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. The message or the message is we're gonna have a white Christmas for Santa. Is that is it gonna be snow or is it well, rain? It's gonna snow. It must snow. be snow. snow. Yeah, it must be snow actually. So I'm gonna go back to Connecticut because my dad is under the weather. His caretaker's flying oh. out of town, and I can't leave him alone. So he doesn't know this yet, but I booked a flight this morning. And I'm going to go back, but I have to go back Thursday morning to beat all the storms. And note to all the robbers who want to rob the house. Now, like, I am here. And And no to anybody. (laughs) Kevin's far more violent without me, so nobody come rob because he's Yeah, Kevin's ready for action. Why don't you switch with me right now? I'm going to let Kevin uh, (laughs) finish up. Give us some more hot tag. Hot tag. I am going to pick out the grays for the studio. The new heel studio is coming together and looking amazing. I'm so excited. (laughs) And then we will be back with fresh content as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Kevin right now because we got a late start and I have my next appointment. Bye, B. Bye, B. Here, honey. Thanks, Maria. You tell your harrowing story. Well, I don't have any harrowing stories. My my harrowing story (laughs) is that... I've uh, worked really too hard these last few years, and I've cooked my body, and I'm tired. <laughs> um, A.B., you've got to pick out some gray. Very exciting. It just takes you two secs. You pick that out, and then I got to keep. I have to keep product moving here, Kelsey. Take a quick break. Let's take a break. Let's take a quick break. And, Perfect. Uh, right? Where is we'll blue back. tongue? So, Kevin, now we have you. Yeah, um, I hear you lifted an entire snowmobile. With your bare hands? Adrenaline. Yeah, that's adrenaline. That's all that is. Wow. Yeah. I, I just, the girl was just, I just, it was dark. And it was just, all you heard was screaming. And then there were two bodies pinned under it. And um, and so, yeah, so first thing I was like, well, let me get this thing off them. Oh, my God. But as I picked it up, her leg, the girl's leg was attached. So the little girl. So I had in one arm. I had the, well, my, both my hands, I had the snowblower that's halfway upright, but then she's attached to it. So I don't know. And her leg is it, like, is it crushed? Is it, do you know what I mean? Like, is it yeah. in an S shape? Like, and it was, it was like S shaped. And I'm like, oh my God. So I, all the men just stood there. I'm like, pick her up. Like, so pick her, like, she's now, she's on the ground. Her legs are up in the air and the snowblower is only, the snow blow, the snow um, mobile. mobile is only halfway up because I have I'm, I have it halfway up. And I yelled at all the men, pick her up. You know, get her. Do you understand what I mean by that? Like, so she could almost come up with the snow blower. And why would, why was they, no, just, they were all just, just standing just, there? They all just looked at me. Yeah. And so I said, all right. So I, I got it upright. Jesus. And then I just deadlifted her from the ground up to get her up myself. And then once I had her up in the air in my arms, um, Maria took her leg up. She was screaming and screaming and screaming. And then um, he said, put her, you know, put her down. And I'm like, I don't want to put her down in the snow. I'd rather just, I'll hold her. And so we held her for a minute. And then I took her over to the side. And then we got her down. And it was amazing because, again, I just am always so impressed with kids today, how much smarter they are. She was immediately like, I can feel it. It's not broken. It was, it was great, you know, and I just, she was obviously upset that she was saying it. So anyway, once she was up, then I just started talking to her, you know, asking her questions, telling her how brave she was and how impressed mm-hmm. I was. Then the jokes started coming out. Like, where yeah, are you Maria from? said you kept her so calm. I was like, yeah, Kevin's good at that. Because- She's like, I'm from Ireland. I was like, oh, Aww. I I said, I knew you were an American. I said, you know what an American would do I did you know what an American mother would do right now? <laughs> I was like, oh my god, she'd be calling in the National Guard, there'd be 15 helicopters. I'm like, forget it. That that's just the beginning. I go because then, you know, this place would be sued for everything that they had. I said, and then not to mention the mental anguish for the rest of your life. I go, you know, like it anyway, the mother was laughing. It was very interesting their relationship too. You can talk, just tell chill parents. Because the mother wasn't as, you know, she was worried, but she wasn't crazy. Right. You know, and the daughter was like, so funny, because once we calmed her down, she was like, I'm not getting on that thing with her. <laughs> like, you're not <laughs> driving, Ma, no way. 
Because she it was because the mom was driving. She was the one who tipped. Yeah, it. yeah. Oh my god. And then it was really cool, fun for me because the <laughs> tour guides finally all came around and said, "Oh, you know, well, don't, no, no, she won't drive. One of us will drive." And they, she was like, "No, I only want to go with him <laughs> to me." To you? And oh, you, they were, and you, they no were so insulted. <gasps> like, and who are you? And I just kept my mouth shut. Like, yeah, she <sighs> wants to go with you. And like, who are you? And I was like, uh, I, I don't know. The guy that didn't panic. The guy that actually was worried about her. The, the guy that like, you know, tended oh to her needs. The guy who knew how to talk to a child in this moment. I don't know. Wow. Maybe that's who I am. So did she drive or ride with you then? No, they 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 have some ones that pull you on the back of a sled. So she ah. that. But it was interesting because... At the very, very end, um, you know, about an hour or two later, probably two hours later when mm. we got back, she went out of her way to come over and said, can I give you a hug? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, of course. That should make me cry. And she's like, I'll never forget you. I said, I won't forget you either. I said, you're going to, I said, you're going to have a, you're going to do great. And I said, you know, <sighs> you're really a trooper. You're going to be the best dad. That makes me cry. No, was it, but Kelsey, you know what? Here's what I was missing. <laughs> I was missing you. I was missing our van. It was I know. another great episode of a <laughs> fake one-hour drama where we come into people's lives, we save right. them, and then we have to leave. And then we have to leave. I must you know? go now. I, I'm sorry. If only I could stay. Are you sure you wow. can't stay with us and join our family? I would like to, but unfortunately, I, go. <laughs> I have to go tend to all Maria's complaints. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Wait, uh, okay. Recommended yeah. trip for everybody. Uh, yeah. I, I, yes. Um, also, can we talk about the fact that your luggage did not get lost? Yeah. I know, That's right? crazy. And it's better mine didn't because, mm. you know, regular guys are all prepared. You had everything. Prepared. Yes. So I had the electric socks. I had the uh, long underwear. I had uh, masks. And mm. by the way, amateur move, the only amateur move on my part was listening to meet Maria when <laughs> – I had all that stuff, and she's like, "Oh, I'm not those battery socks with the heavy batteries. I'm not, you know, I don't want those." I'm like, "Okay." So basically, <laughs> all my stuff, she ended up using it. She's like, "How you know by now not to listen to me? You know by now, don't listen." To <laughs> she was just saying how much she loved the socks. Yeah. So yes, because they. Did. So you know, next time, and if anyone goes, like, let us know because I'll, I can, I would be more prepared. I'll have more doohickeys and workarounds and things. I had a few things, but there's way more because it is cold. It's wonderful, but it's wow. cold. It's cold. The people are very nice. It's very clean, um, but it's cold. Dang. You know. But overall, good times. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it was great, fast. Great. You guys were gone so quick. You know, I feel like though I tell you, people, I know that this can wear you out with a lot of your vacations, but I think it's better to pack them in because. We, we even when we left the uh, Northern Lights, we left that part Lapland. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, we were like, you know, we've done, every, we've seen everything. And then when we went to Helsinki, even like when I looked up a lot of the things to see in Helsinki, we saw a lot of them. So, I think it was better to go like that, short and sweet, and be, to be able to see everything rather than, you know, taking our time and, you know, and not only seeing one thing. That makes sense. And I also sometimes too, it's like when it's, when it's too long, it's worse when it's short and you're like, that was fun. And now I'm like, it's like in and out. Well, I think you have to define what vacations are. Mm. Is this vacation to go and rest and relax? If that is what the case is, I suggest warm climate and you know, you're just lying on the beach all day or at the pool and it's that kind of vacation. And, um, or, I mean, I'm sure you get in a cold climate too. I mean, maybe maybe you go to wine country, you know, but it's it's that vacation. But then if it's the vacation of, I'm, I'm sightseeing, I'm seeing history, then, you know, you, you're going to tax your body, but then you get to see all these incredible things. But I, I with us, it was my favorite kind. It was the workcation, which I've talked about. So we did MTV Challenge. So most of the trip was paid for. And then, you know, after that, it was all gravy. And by the way, everyone from MTV did the exact same thing. Everyone either stayed in London for more days or they went, someone I knew went to Ireland. Smart. Someone actually actually did go to Lapland as well. Okay. Um, to me, that's the best kind of vacation, you know. And, and, and um, yeah, we got a lot off the bucket list, got to see a lot of different sites. Makes me want to see more. And, um, you know, again, 
I tell anyone who is at a stage in their life that wants to make a change and can, I really say explore some, living in some of these other countries because the quality of life is far superior. You know, um, the stress levels are far lower. People are a lot nicer. They're cleaner. They usually run better because they're smaller. They can be managed better. The taxes are high, but you actually are getting services for your taxes. You're getting education. You're getting health care. You can just tell them the vibe and the people, you know? So I, and I know, I know the generation under you and the generation under them is more than we're going to go. And I actually think there's going to be more empty nesters and more people like we talked about Kelly, you know, from the designer, Kelly, yeah, yeah, Kelly, Ellis. Kelly Ellis, who went to, who did her eat, pray, love journey, yeah. moved to Spain and just any just of her so angst, her stress all gone. Yeah. So I, that that's the one thing. So I want to. I hear great things about Norway. A lot of these Scandinavian countries. You mm. listen, they're cold, but they're really nice places. Um, I lived with a ton of Norwegians when I lived in London. They were all angels. They were nice. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, listen, it's nice. Not, it's not that we're. It's not that we're bad people. People are people, but environment plays a big hand in it, and our environment is a very stressful one. You know, it's, it's, there's more people, it's crowded, especially in cities. And so with all that stuff generally brings all the bad. And then it's really hard to manage all of it um, when you're so big. So you can't manage it as efficiently. So um, it is nice though. I, I li- I'd like to think that a lot of American tourists are liked. And I, t- I always talk to the people about what they think of Americans in they might not love America because we just have bad PR as far as a country. They all want to visit, but they tend to like the people because here's the thing. Our culture is we tip. So they're not used to that. So they're always shocked when you give them the feel good 20, the C note, you know what I mean? They're like confused, (laughs) but they're like, wait, what? Yeah. And we all, a lot of us do that over there mm-hmm. which i think is re- which has to be one for us so yeah so anyway yeah a really great way to get the spirit um if i had my druthers it was nice to see that santa's village i would like to do a tour of some of the other santa's villages around the country you know? let's go i'm yeah. in all right we will i'm in all speaking of kev i hate to cut it but we have an appointment with uh, mr christmas eve eve himself you guys okay so a couple of quick things you guys please if you want to get into the christmas spirit the greatest time of the year check out our christmas specials we love podcasts that we produce here in house um we cover many of the great christmas specials it is it is our season one so if you check out um the 10 episodes we've done we cover a lot of great specials uh next season we'll be covering more but give us a check and of course yes this is a tease for um i know today's wednesday but this is a tease for our regular guy friday episode which happens to land on Christmas Eve Eve. How perfect. Who is the father of Christmas Eve Eve but Jeffrey Crane Graham, our former producer of Better Together. <laughs> but here's the thing with Jeffrey Crane Graham, because he did make the call that Christmas Eve Eve is a holiday. Because yeah. it's a holiday, we've got to pre-tape something with him because that's Jeff's that's the legal holiday that Jeff created. And and you know what? We live by it. So we have to pre-tape Jeff, which we'll get off the phone to do now, and then I know we'll be hearing from everyone Friday, and uh, there might be something in your stocking this Thursday. I know we do a throwback, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the queens and see if there isn't just I don't know something to pump us up for the holidays. I don't know. Just feels right. It doesn't feel right to go to a throwback. Not not this week, unless it's a throwback Christmas thing. It just doesn't feel right. Anyway. Else, <laughs> take us out of here. This is your show. I didn't mean to hijack it. No, just, we I'm we're glad you did. Today. No, just you're really. I I loved all your points of view. Um, thank you for saving the eight year old on the snowmobile. That was crazy. I'm glad I hadn't heard that story before Maria started telling it. She was like, "Did Kevin tell you?" I said, "No." Oh. So thank God you guys are superheroes. Listen, and- we have went many episodes, Kelsey, in our one hour fake drama. There's just too many of them. That would be like <laughs> I don't know, season three, mid season. You know. You know. You just know. A- yeah, I wish I could have stayed with the family, but I had to move on. You know that. Oh, I am dinging. Je- Jeffrey Crane Graham. Oh, my uh, he's God. Got, listen, it's Christmas Eve Eve. It's exciting, you guys. Christmas Eve Eve is two days away. Everyone stop effing around. 
You, all of you, why are you even listening to this? You should be preparing for Christmas Eve Eve like Jeffrey Crane Graham. We got to get out of here, Kelsey. Now I keep muting and unmuting myself. I'm getting dinged over here. All right, Jeffrey Crane go. Graham, strict schedule. Okay. Love you guys. Um, see you Friday. See you next week. Be nice people. Make good choices. Be present. And check out our merch so you can rock um, a yeah. or a uh, hat. I'm, I, like I said, I have not taken that hat off, getting all the compliments. So love y'all. Like a queen. Like a queen. And we didn't even discuss. I did find some queens in Finland. Well, we have to. We'll discuss that there Friday. Were few and far between, but there were queens there. There were kings and queens. We went to one hotel. And I said, "Oh, Maria, oh my God, this Kevin, crazy. save it, tease oh, it." Oh my God, there were peace signs going, all the <gasps> selfies around the Christmas tree. I'm like, you, you don't understand, Kelsey. I have a friend, Kelsey, who's a queen too. <laughs> all right, I gotta go, you guys. Bye. Okay, bye, everyone. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.